So for the Firestar CRUD project, we can actually improve on some things. So for the current solution, we have no separation of the logic and UI. It's difficult to change out the backend if you don't want to use Firestore anymore. And also it becomes quite hard to read. So a way to improve this is that we're going to implement a block pattern. So with a block solution, we're going to have a better separation. We're going to be easy to switch out the backend and also increase the readability. And in this video, we're actually going to look at that. So stay tuned and use the word from Skillshare. Skillshare provides over 22,000 lessons in multiple different subjects. Right now, I'm taking the time to learn more on design and also social media, as I've never been good with any of that. If Skillshare is something for you, consider using the link in the description to get two months of free use. So first off, we're just going to create a block provider file. Inside this, we're going to paste some code. And this code can be found on GitHub and also I have block tutorials which is covered this one. And the next thing we're going to do is just to structure this code a bit. We're going to create two folders, one called repository and one called source. And this is just a personal preference, you can call it API or whatever you want. But in repository I'm just going to have API files. So inside this repository I'm going to create a database file. I'm just going to instantiate it as a global variable and also import the Firestore reference. The next step is to structure our home. So we'll create a home folder in the source. We're going to have two files, one called home.dart and one for the block, so home underscore block. I'm first just going to take all the code from home.dart and put that in our new file. And we're going to restructure this a bit. So let's start by removing some of the files right here. We have the random to do, which we can actually remove. We won't have that inside here anymore. Also, we're going to remove the delete. We're going to remove the update data and the read data. All of these three files are going to be now structured in the home block file, uh, but the create data is going to be a little different. We're actually not going to have the block to handle the form. We're still going to use the stateful widget to handle the form. And that's just a personal preference of me. Um, so we're just going to remove some of the code inside here. Inside here, we're going to remove these three lines. Because inside here, then later we're going to call the block function. Then at the top of this Firestore page, we can remove the ID. We're going to remove the reference to the database. And we're going to have the form key left inside here and also the string name. As those are used for the form. We can ignore the errors for now. These are going to be fixed when we have created our block file. So let's go to our block file and create our class. We implement our dispose override from the block base. And then we're just going to create some things. So first off, we'll start by creating a constructor. We're going to wait with this part. We're going to create the other first. So first off, as we remove the ID, we're going to put a ID stream inside here. Just make sure that when you're using streams, you always close them. So now we have a stream without ID and in ID, and this is just used to disable our read button. Then we're going to have another stream, and that would be responsible for the Firestore data. So what we're actually saying is just that we're going to have a controller with the type of query snapshot. And this one will get its data from the stream that we will listen to in the database. So now let's just create our read, update, delete, and create functions. So the first function we're going to create is the read data function. We're going to use a sync as the database function actually will take time. The value we will pass in is the ID, which we have as a variable in this block base. So if we scroll up, we can see that we have the string ID up here.
And the reason that we are passing the document snapshot is that if we go to home.dart, we can see that we're using that document snapshot to get the ID of the document. So let's have it like that for now. And the delete data will pretty much be the same. We need the document snapshot to get the ID again. Then we just need one more function, which will be the create data function. Inside here, we're passing the name as a property. And the reason for this is because we have the form in the UI and that will pass the name. And we will actually have a function that returns a value in the database. So that's okay for now. So let's now go to the database functions. So inside here, we're going to have a few different functions. The first function we're going to have is just a function that returns the stream from the database or the file store reference. We're just going to call it init stream, and this will just return the snapshots of the collection. For the other function, we're going to use the create data function. This one will be a future of type string as this takes time and we also need a property of name so we can create the actual data. If we go to home.dart again, we go to create data, we can see that we have this code right here. Let's just copy that and go to the database file and paste that in. We can see that we're doing a few different things. First off, we can see that we're already using the name, so we can ignore that. The second thing we have to fix is that we are using a set state. We don't actually need to do that anymore as we're not using any state in this function. We don't actually need to do that anymore as we don't have any state in this class. We're just going to actually return the document ID to the block. The next thing we can see in this function is that we have the run on to do. I will actually just paste the function we created before inside this. This is not the best place to have it. Uh, the actual, a better place to have this would actually be in some kind of to-do object. But as we are just working with the object as it is, we will just put this here for now. The next function we are going to fix is the read data. The read data will be very similar. We just pass in the ID and then we get just get into collection of crowd of document ID. And this is the code that we have in home.dart. I'm just copying it and pasting inside here. We're setting the return type to a future void as we're using a sync and a wait. We're doing the same with update data and then the same with delete data. So now our database file should be complete. So let's close that down. We can see now that we have our functions inside here. And this function, so you're just going to call the database function as we have written here. So we just need the database, which is just a global variable. So we should be able to use to implement that. And we should just be able to import that. So that is all for the read data. The update data is the same. The delete data, we're going to have to do one more thing, or actually two more things. The first thing is that we are deleting a data, so let's set the ID to null. And also we just have to push out the ID to the stream. For the create data, we have the create data function, which we can see returns a future type string. That's why we're using a wait. We can now see now we can now see that we have the ID, so let's just take the ID and put that into our variable. And then again just pushing that out the stream also. So now we have to do one more thing inside here, and that's initializing the stream. So if we go to the home block constructor, we can call the database, and we have the function called init stream. We can then just listen to this stream, and in the listener, we're just going to push each data that we get from this stream into our own stream. The reason why we're doing it this way is just because it's very easy to abstract and remove the file store in the equation and just implement another database if we want to. So now this block should be complete. So now in the main.dart file, we actually have to use the block provider to give us the block. Like that. So now we're using the block provider, which is, should give us the block inside the file store page. So now inside the build function of home, we can actually use the block provider to get the block with the context.
And to use this now, we can simply copy the block. And each time we actually want some data, we can actually use that. So one thing we have to do first inside this raised button, we're using the ID. And this is provided in the block, which is extreme. So first let's wrap this inside the stream builder, which will just return a string. The stream will be out ID. And also we're just going to provide some initial data and initial data will just be null. Now we actually have the ID here, but the ID is actually the snapshot. We can take the snapshot of data. And if it's not null, we are going to call the read data function, which is provided in the block. The next place we have this one, which is the database collection CRUD snapshot. And as we have abstracted this one more layer, we can just call the block, which is called out firestore. And as you can see now, this becomes a bit more clearer that what the actual function does. So we don't have to clutter the main UI with some uh, queries. Now I have to do one more thing. So if we see in the build item function, we actually have to provide a new property called block. We just call the functions inside block instead. And now when we just call the build item, we'll pass the block also. And the last thing we actually have to do also is just inside the create data, we add another property. So inside this create data function, we can call the block create data. And we just pass in the name. And also here at the on pressed, we create a anonymous function and then just pass the block. The last part we actually have to do now is just to remove our old home.dart file. And this would just make the child not having a reference. So let's just reference our new home file. And remove the old import. So what we actually can do now is the same as before, but we have cleaned up the code a bit. So now we can actually still delete, update and create some new data and also read it, which is printed to the console. If you like this video, please let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel and comment down below what we'd like to see next. Uh, be sure to check out my Patreon, Twitter and Instagram if that's something you're into. And I will see you next time. Bye.